Welcome back to Puff Nostalgia. Right, this time we'll look at the Magic House. Um, Magic House, this is a pretty obscure type of TV show that I've come across. Um, so let's go to the beginning. Let's start off where the basics came from. So back in, Italy, back in the mid-80s, 1984 to be precise, I think, um, illustrator, painter, Joe Austin, uh, written 24 books to do with anthropomorphic... Um, kitchenware, furniture, in this magic house in the middle, in the middle of, on a hill in the middle of nowhere. Um, policy adventures of certain characters, PC Pot, Uncle Teapot, H.D. Wells, Barney Bin, Soapy Bubbles, Kitty Kettle, Grandpa Clock, and all these sort of interesting, interesting characters. And it was actually, I think, might have been successful in the mid-80s, 84, 85, to be, to be good. And nice illustrations as well, very colourful. Very abstract as well, like it's sort of like something different, really. Come ten years later, 94, we got this puppet show. Now, first things first, I've only, I only remember watching The Magic House briefly on a VHS, which was the children's preschool compilation from 94, it was episode airfare, and I haven't got a clue of what was going on. I just remember the intro, which was quite bouncing, a bit of fun, all all shaking. The house was jigging, the magic house was jigging out. You know, very good. It's like it's it's nice, so like a flanged acoustic type style to it. Very poppy as well. Come in and join us. That sort of thing. It's like keeps going on and on. It does. And then we get the episode. It's all and the one thing to notice. It's puppets. This this is. And they're quite bulky puppets, they're quite different, and I was just interested. The only thing I can remember was Uncle Teapot talking to H.T. Wells, because I think, oh, Grandpa Clock's ill. And he, show, and he shows him fruits to make it better, and he gives him magic grapes. When he gives them back, he, Grandpa Clock only eats quite a big handful, and he ends up flying in the air, he becomes lightweight, and flies in the air. And that, was, that was the only type I could see, I... Only get saw the magic house. It was like a four minute excerpt from that VHS. Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't until like late, really later on, I started to like maybe recently I started to uh, understand it a bit more, and I was really intrigued by it. I mean, the characters themselves are really different because you know PC Pot's quite boisterous. He is Uncle Teapot, quite playful as well. I wonder why they call him Uncle Teapot. Hmm. Someone mentioned on the internet. Uh, someone on the internet saw. Someone on the internet has actually sort of mentioned that. Is he everyone's uncle? Who knows? It's quite weird, that is. Um, obviously, you have Grandpa Claw, the old and wise man, you know. Grandfather, grandfather figure, figure. You've got H.T. Wells, who's sort, of, he's sort of a problem solver, very much. He's Scottish and lives outside, has arms, and he has like a magic wand, this sort of thing. And you have like... Uh, Kitty Kettle, Soapy Bowls, that you have. And I feel, I know, a new female character that they've... Jawson creator was called Betty Bush. I think that's the name. Betty Broom, Betty Bush. Who knows? Yeah. And for a while, it was actually quite interesting. It was, I mean, there was ten stories at the well in, 90, in the ninety four season. If well, if there was any more, I don't know what if there was. Uh, just interesting, like like the PC Pot's mirror image. You had, um, I know, like the the garden becomes more bigger and more uh, flowery and stuff and and engulfs the magic house, which is quite interesting. You have like moving draw like moving drawing pictures as well, which is interesting. Like everything is magical and quite surreal as well, in a way. It's like hmm, interesting. It wasn't until some someone posted um uh, uploaded some uh CITV um, repeats from 9596 and the Magic House was on. Now, I thought the Magic, Magic House sort of ended in 94, like for a one-off thing. Apparently, it's stayed on for two more seasons. 
And this is when the change. This is when things start to get a bit uh, pastiche and a bit. Uh, so from ninety five, we uh, from the second season ninety five, um, we go introduce this. We get to introduce this new character called uh, Waffle, who's just this monkey man in a suit who's got who's and has like a magic hat. And I sort of thought, oh god. I mean, when looking at it, I think he sort of down. He sort of is. They're basically pushing H.T. Wells to the side, and then comes this character, and he becomes more dominant. He does like he really becomes extreme. He's in every single, every single episode from season two and three. God. And this is the problem with the Magic House now. I mean, it sort of becomes. It became a bit too sing along as well, like. So to introduce some more songs and even some end up playing over the end credits as well. It's becoming slightly not the best. I would I would say. I mean, the first ten episodes from ninety four are actually quite good. They are. I mean, I've only seen six to be honest. Well, six six of the f- and six episodes and sort of and a, t- a tiny excerpt of another one. But I was quite interested. It was I mean. I was interested at the start, but when looking at 95, 96, it's just... Ugh. It's like we, it's like we're retreading Rainbow again, really, which I'll get, get into eventually. You basically got the, ri- this, the you know, this, ri- this rainbow motif, or the, the pastiche rainbow or something like that. Like, every, everything has to be like rainbow. Very much, you know, human char- puppets, human characters, guys, people in suits, like furry costume suits. And it's sort of... It's... It goes still after a while, I think, and I think that's why it's. I think that's why it suffered really. I think afterwards, even though the books are interesting, they didn't really use all the characters as well, like Sam Spade and Teddy Chair, which I thought might have been actually interesting to see. However, we didn't get that at all. Nope. Instead, we got puppets, which are nicely real, nicely realized, and nicely designed as well, which I thought was which was good. Voice actors, um, the puppeteers were actually are quite good as well. Even though some of them, they, even from each season, they all they all change to even halfway through the season. Really, you get new puppeteers. I'm like, oh, so and so has gone now. Um, you know, it's just like just a little bit of a mishmash, really. Even though it, even though it was popular on CITV back in the night in the mid nineties, you know, that's good. But when if when it's in its later stage, nah, not too good. I just thought I just I look I even look back back right now. It's just yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been talking about the Magic House from 1984, based on the books from Joe Austin from 1984, 85, 84. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you for the next video. Bye.